Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to briefly discuss a thrifting haul of handbags. For the past eight years I have collected vintage handbags. Um, I've always been an avid collector of handbags but prior to that it always had to be um, you know something brand new. Uh, whether it was from the outlet store or something on sale or you know the regular retail price nothing that someone used no hand-me-down that's how I was before but the past eight years I have really grown to appreciate the fine worksmanship of bags from uh, the 40s 50s 60s 70s you know even if it was 10 years ago you know 2007 and it, as I've studied these bags it's just amazing to look at how the mindset back then was you know with some of the brands and then how it's still the same you know with the modern you know styles that they're making and just the quality really holds up from these older bags and I'm just like infatuated with it now what I'm gonna present is a small collection because it gets to the point where I have like so many bags that I just they just sit I don't use them and so either I'll sell them or give them away and so I just start all over again so the majority the concept is when I get them when I find them to keep them and that doesn't happen okay I'm gonna start out with a Bally's bag it's a clutch leather clutch found it for like $5 it says Bally's in there the only thing um, it didn't have the strap which is you know to be expected in, in a vintage shop uh, or you know a consignment shop or a, a second-hand store you know but it, it's in great condition this next bag um, drew my attention because the inside of it is like a very well-kept satin or silk it's very very nicely um, sewed in there I mean whoever had this bag like hardly used it but the brand name says Koblenz and when I looked it up it's uh, a, a brand name from back in the 40s and 50s and you can tell it's like a cute little you know roaring 20s I guess you want to say you know kind of clutch and I haven't had it looked at yet so I'm not sure if this is brass or gold but there's a stamp on this side this side here that says like made in Belgium and I actually had to take a picture of it and zoom it to see what it was saying um, and I haven't used it yet it's just sitting in my closet but you know I'm sure I'll use it someday night on the town it'd be a you know a cute little clutch next uh, this is a Fendi mama baguette and um, my good friend helped me authenticate this I saw this hanging in a um, secondhand store and the markings were on the hardware I just wanted to be sure um, so I sent her pictures and she says yes that's that's real because she collects Fendi's ba Fendi bags and this is the um, I don't know if you want to say baby Zuka or the smaller Zuka um, but the lining and everything says Fendi and everything is like in a row nothing's uh, the stitching or anything is off so I'm like whoa this this is real um, the only thing is the shoulder strap was in such bad shape I had to get it replaced because it's about to fall apart you know because I wanted to carry it all the time so I went to a leather shop and had a leather strap put on here but you know it just ruined the authenticity of the bag because the whole thing isn't real but you know I still like it this is a Louis Vuitton speedy 30 um, this is from 1988 I found this on Craigslist it was oh by the way I'm sorry this Fendi bag was about $15 found this on Craigslist for $100 um, the girl was young she didn't really realize what it was that she had but it, her grandma passed it down to her and she hardly carried it and she knew the value and the quality of a Louis Vuitton and she thought oh $100 is you know pretty good and she probably could have sold this for $250 so she just needed the cash I gave her the cash and I got the bag um, the ends are starting to give way I mean this bag is really on its last leg but um, I carry it seldomly because when I first got it from her I carried it like every day and I've had to put um, some fabric glue on the leaf because the leaf was like hanging off one day and I didn't want it to like fall off and I'm trying to carry it because I would have had a fit because that leaf on the zipper pull is everything so there's that Longchamp nylon crossbody bag 
and you can see where it's like wearing away there, but you see the, the horse and all, and you know, you see the emblem on the zipper. And this is my go-to bag. I carry this like so much because we've had such a rainy uh, spring, summer, and our winter was nasty. And this is my go-to bag for the damp, wet weather because the water just rolls right off. And um, this is not the, this, this nylon is a little thicker than the popular uh, Longchamp La Pliage bags because I can tell the corners are still intact and I've carried this bag like so much. So um, this is way more durable than the La Pliage and I really like it. And this bag was like $5. Someone just was like, Shh, I don't want it anymore. Next is one of my faves. It's a Prada um, vintage bucket bag. And I've become uh, quite acquainted with um, knowing how to authenticate Prada on the spot if it's vintage. The lining says Prada, the hardware, I mean all the markers, the serial number, everything to look for this bag has. And really what caught my attention was the grain of leather. I had no idea it was a Prada until I actually picked it up and like really looked at it. Cause like, okay, I saw that, but this is on a lot of knockoff bags, but just looking all throughout and just the, just the quality of it. I'm like, this thing is real. And this was 25. Um, I thought it was 25 too much, but considering that it's Prada and this grain of leather, I couldn't be, I couldn't leave it on the rack. A Todd's vintage tote. Didn't come with the straps, but that's okay. It's a harder type of leather because I tried to, there's Todd's right there. And I bought it for like $5. It was actually $9, but it was half off. And then with tags, brought it to $5. Um, this is a different type of leather because it's really stiff. And I've actually tried to take it like every day to like break it in, it didn't. So it's just the type of leather that it is. It's a really narrow bag and it's starting to crack there on the edges. So I have to be really careful when I'm, you know, opening it up because I don't want to ruin this bag, but Todd's. The next bag almost caused me to faint. Um, I mean, just, it was just hanging on the rack like that. And just knowing the wrinkly, uh, texture, I knew exactly, I didn't even have to see Givenchy, but when I saw it like from this way, I knew exactly what it was. And I was like, that's a knockoff because this Givenchy bag cannot be hanging on this rack right now. Looked at the price, 26, 26 too much. But the aroma of this bag, this is lamb skin. I was like, who didn't want this bag? They were just like really silly. So Givenchy in this bag, and that's another thing, this bag is still made today. Like it, the Pandora Mini retails for like $1,300. It's a little different. And um, I tried to do some reach on, on research online, but it's very limited. But the serial number says MA0098. And it seems to be in the same format as the LV back in the day. So I don't know if this is the ninth month 2008 and ma is the factory i don't know but i did find out online that Givenchy rolled these out in 2008 so this very well may be the first pandora mini bag that was ever made and i'm like really excited so looking at this bag over and over it's literally almost flawless the only thing that i found was that the binding there is breaking up and that was like my only conclusion that why they gave this bag up oh the bindings breaking I'm just gonna you know or maybe they tried to go to Givenchy and get it repaired and it was like you know really costly so they thought maybe oh and maybe someone's just being a good Samaritan and be like someone will know what this is I'm just gonna give it to charity it's mine now thank you and the last bag is gonna be I'm gonna continue this in another video because this it's going to take a whole video by itself to explain this bag, but I'm really, really hoping that this is an Hermes Kelly 32. Paid $9 for it. And I've really struggled to try to figure out how to find someone to authenticate this. But there is only one marking in this bag that they used back in the 70s on high-end bags. So I'm going to leave it with that. And I thank you for visiting and we'll talk later. Bye.